So for a while now, I always wanted to send control voltages from Pure Data or Maximus P to my modular synth rig. My rig is limited and incomplete, and I don't have the money to buy more modules right now. Because of that, being able to send CBs from Pure Data will open up a lot of possibilities and fill in the gap without spending too much money. What I can hypothetically do is create a generative sequencer for my rings. I can also perhaps create a complex function generator for my VCA or filter. And maybe I can send an LFO that is synced up to the music that is being made in Pure Data. Possibilities are pretty much endless. One way to send CBs from Pure Data is to use expert sleeper products, which I have heard great things about. The issue is that they are quite expensive. And I also know that there are audio interfaces that can send CBs, but I already have an audio interface. So I want to come up with a DIY solution that is both affordable and also easy to do. And I hope that I can find something that may be useful to you as well. Luckily for us, we may have a solution, and that is to use this Quad DAC and Arduino. In the last two videos, we explored this Quad DAC and came into the conclusion that it's great for modular synth. In one of my older tutorials, we found a way to send data from pure data to Arduino. What that allowed us to do is control LEDs with LFOs, for example. So theoretically, we should be able to send data from pure data and convert them into control voltages. And that's what we're going to test out in this video. Okay, here's the code from that pure data to Arduino tutorial, and I modified it for this video. If you want to learn more about this code, please watch the tutorial. Otherwise, there's no need to adjust anything further. This is what the pure data patch looks like. Okay, we're going to test if CB is being sent. It's currently hooked up to Ring's pitch CB input. Okay, I think the logical next step is to get musical pitch out of this voltage so that we can send pitch CB from a generative sequencer. I'll be using Ring's to test this out. Unfortunately, I don't have any other oscillators, but I'm confident that it'll work for the oscillators that you have. I'm going to refer to this 0 to 4095 as the pure data voltage. So it's equivalent to 0 to 5 volts in control voltage. Please make sure that the attenuverter is set at 12 o'clock. Okay, here's the formula that will allow us to convert MIDI notes to control voltage value. But how did I get this formula? So I used my multimeter like how I did in this previous tutorial. And it looks like 4020 in pure data is equivalent to 5 volts. And because Eurorack has the 1 volt per octave standard, I can divide 4020 by 5 and get 804. So to go from 0 to 1 volt in CV, we go from 0 to 804 in pure data. And so on and so forth. Therefore, 804 divided by 12, because there are 12 semitones within an octave, we get 67. So each semitone is separated by 67 pure data voltage. Next, we need to have a starting point. As far as I know, 0 volt is not equivalent to a specific note. So I'm going to arbitrarily use the MIDI note 36, which is a low C, as the starting point. I configure the frequency knob on my rings to around 10 o'clock so that 0 volt is a low C. Let's see this formula in action. The MIDI note 37, which is a C sharp, will result in 37 minus 36, which is multiplied by 67. So it's 67. And so on and so forth. Finally, 0 volt is not quite at C. It's a little bit too low. I think this is an inherent thing with the quad EAC. So that's where that 5 in the formula comes from. Everything is pitch shifted up a little bit. And this resulted in pretty much all 60 notes being perfectly in tune. The deviation is around 5 to 6 cents, like with this note for example. But most people can't hear the difference between a note that is perfect versus a note that is 5 cents higher. Now that we got this formula, we can start having fun. Okay, I quickly created a generative sequencer similar to the one from this tutorial. I have a simple function generator for the VCA and an LFO for the brightness parameter of rings. And finally, I have a bass synth playing inside of pure data. Okay, let's hear it in action.
One important thing we need to test out is the latency. So I have a simple and short function generator, and it's connected to the gain of this white noise. And it's also being sent out as a CV for a VCA. The audio will come back to pure data via the ADC tilde object, and we'll record both sounds at the same time to see how much latency there is. So even with the default I.O. setting, the latency is much lower than I expected. Let's try minimizing the latency with smaller I.O. vector size, and you can decide if the latency is small enough. For me personally, this latency is definitely small enough for what I do. So what do you think? Is this something that you may be interested in trying out? As for what to do next, I'm thinking about designing an aluminum panel like I did with this controller and make a custom module using the Quad DAC and Arduino. The HP size should end up being small. And I might actually make a video on it, so please subscribe if you're interested. We can also implement what we just did in max for live so that we can control modular synth inside of Ableton. I might make a video if there are enough demands, so please comment below if you would like to see a tutorial on that. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope this video was helpful. If you do end up trying this for yourself, please feel free to tag me on Instagram or Twitter. Have fun!